Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies and welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner combined with a Chassis Sim tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a real treat for you. What we're going to be talking about today is specifying dampers for a high down horse race car, a case study. And in particular, this is a hands-on case study of a um, job that we've got that's currently in progress. But more importantly, with everything that's going on in the motorsport community right now in particular, um, with so much emphasis um, that's been placed uh, with um, the Formula One community transitioning from flat bottom cars to ground effect underbody tunnels and the porpoising problems that they've been having. The timing of this case study couldn't be more fortuitous, so let's get into it. Okay, some introductions. First things first, specifying dampers for a high downforce race car is always going to be a challenge. In particular, the dance you play is that dance between controlling the platform and in terms of mechanical grip, particularly when you're dealing with really, really rough surfaces. Um, the days of just TIG rolling the car all together and you sacrifice everything on the altar of aerodynamics, that is a very, very outdated approach. And in particular, as we're about to discuss, it's a very, very unnecessary approach. And make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, your best friend in dealing with this is the Chassis Sim Shaker Rig Toolbox. And what we're going to talk about in this um, tutorial today is the techniques that you that were involved in this job. And we're going to show you the end result. And I want to really ram home one point here, ladies and gentlemen. And that is what we're about to show you in terms of the way that this job was approached. It's exactly the same techniques using the Chassis Sim Shaker Rig Toolbox that we at Chassis Sim have applied for touring cars, time attack cars, GT3 cars, Indy cars, sports cars, and any high downforce race cars. The techniques are exactly the same, which is why I think what we're about to discuss with you today is such a powerful case study. Okay, so here is the car in question, the Empire Rat. Now, this is a hill climb car, and the great thing about hill climb is that there's no rules. However, this also, most hill climb circuits are incredibly bumpy, which I actually think is a really good thing because it actually forces you to be a really good engineer in how you approach this challenge. Now, this particular car, the downforce was done by a very good friend of mine, um, Willem Toet, who's um, been doing aero for forever and a day. And make no mistake, this car aerodynamically is a masterpiece and is a screaming case study of why um, Willem Toet is one of the best in the business. However, what it needed was a spring damper package, and that's where we came in. So... Our tool for dealing with this, our first go-to, was the Chassis Sim Shaker Rig Toolbox. Now, in terms of the mechanics of driving the Chassis Sim Shaker Rig Toolbox, what to look for, how to use it, I have done this to death on multiple occasions, and in particular in terms of the tutorials that we've done on it, and also too, we discussed this at length in the Chassis Sim Boot Camps. That being said, let me give you the quick elevator speech of what you're looking for. So, what you're looking for here is the contact patch load variation, which gives you a measure of mechanical grip. The whole idea is that the um, lower this number is, the better the mechanical grip is. You're looking at the heave response, which is the ratio of output on input versus frequency, and you're also looking at the cross pitch mode response. Now, the relative importance of, the, of these four metrics will change on the car. Like for example, if you're dealing with a, a car that's primarily mechanical grip, the contact patch load variations will take priority. However, if you're dealing with a high downforce car, and in particular, for those of you tuning in who are struggling with porpoising issues, the thing that will take your priority is minimizing the cross pitch mode response for a heave input. That is your first go-to. If you can get on top of this, particularly for a high downforce race car, and particularly if you are suffering from high frequency vibration issues, or you're dealing with anything at all to do uh, to deal with porpoising, that is your first go-to. Now, if you've got a great aero, uh, if you've got a great aero package, then yes, you could you can get a significant way down the road addressing this with a spring and damper package. Clearly, if the aero isn't particular is badly conditioned, you're going to struggle with this. But at least with what we're about to talk about, you can mitigate this to some extent. So that's a real they're the really key things to take away from here. The other tool that was used in this was the dual rate damper model. Now, the dual rate damper model is a really powerful tool 
to help you visualize where to go with your tamping. And what we do with the dual rate tamping model is that we break the damper into its low speed section and its high speed sections. Now, the low speed section primarily deals with body control. So how the, uh, so how the car responds in uh, heave, pitch and roll. The high speed deals with how it transitions um, over the bumps. And the way that we specify this is we specify a rate in newtons per meters per second for the low speed, a rate in newtons per meters per second for the high speed, and we specify a bypass, and we do this independently for both bump and rebound. Now, the beauty about this tool is that you can quickly dial in what you need. And in particular, I had one of my IndyCar customers who used this tool very, very effective, effectively because they said that it allowed them to get through and uh, through a lot of options really, really quickly. Now, this is not perfect, but it is brutally effective. And indeed, for me, the dual rate damper model is pretty much the backbone of how to have of how I do my damper work combined with the Chassis and Shaker Rig Toolbox. Okay, so the tuning process. So here was an, so here's an example of the tuning process I went for through for this particular car. Now, a few disclaimers, I'm not going to talk to you about setup numbers for this car. Because this is a job in progress, that would be a complete betrayal of um, customer confidentiality and things like this I tend to take pretty seriously. But what I really want to show you, the, and the reason I'm showing you this table, is this pretty much illustrates the methodology and the key metrics I'm looking for. So what I'm looking for is the heave resonant response frequency, so where we get our peak heave resonant response in hertz. This is the actual heave response, output over input. This is the cross pitch response, output on input. The contact patch load variation at the front, the contact patch load variation at the rear. One thing though I do want to bring your attention to, note the changes where I actually increased spring rate. Note the changes in the contact patch load variation at the rear and note the changes in terms of the, of the reduction in terms of cross pitch mode response. One of the biggest criticisms that is leveled at um, Shaker Rig, whether it be Shaker Rig software packages like Chassis Sim, or when you actually take the car to a Shaker Rig, is that they invariably always force you to go um, softer. Now, the great thing about Chassis Sim is that because if you combine a proper aero map with this, whether it's a really well produced CFD map like the one I was dealing with, um, courtesy of um, Willem, or you're dealing with an aero map generated from race data. All of a sudden, this now comes into the uh, uh, this now comes to the fore in terms of the shaker rig calculation. It sort of goes back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier in terms of when you're dealing with high downforce aerodynamics. If you can get on top of that cross pitch mode response, everything else is going to flow um, downstream from it. And and particularly what we did with this car is because the circuit that uh, this car was running on was so bumpy. What we did was that we basically backed off on the spring rate and basically up the low speed rate to help in terms of um, controlling um, uh, the platform. So what were the end results? There was a significant improvement in the stability of um, uh, the platform and we are talking night and day. And also too, again, to go over this again, to reiterate this again, this was done with softer spring rates. But here's the thing, ultimately I can give you a call to action in terms of Yes, download the online simulation or look into the elite options of Chassis, which the Shaker Rig Toolbox is part of. But ultimately, I'm going to let this video do the talking to show you just what a powerful tool this is. And we'll catch you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner slash Chassis Sim Video Tutorial. <laughs>